Hey, bar experiencers. Welcome to Bar Experience. My name is Brandon Beasley. If you don't know what a bar experiencer or a bar experience is, I'm getting ready to tell you. Right now, we're rolling out our seasonal cocktail for the fall season. I'm uh, really excited about it. We have all of our fresh ingredients out on the table, and we're going to show you how bar experience does fall. So at bar experience, when we think of the fall, we think of ingredients such as pumpkin, ginger, root vegetables, spices like allspice, and cinnamon. So what we're going to do is take all these ingredients, including fresh citrus, um, basic sweeteners like sugar, uh, and mix them together in a way that's going to put all of the best flavors forward and balance the cocktail out to really make you close your eyes and think of fall as you're enjoying this excellent libation. For the basic foundation of this cocktail, I had initially designed it to feature whiskey. And as I started thinking about it, I wanted to use something a little bit off the beaten path. So I decided to go with Bacardi 8. And what Bacardi 8 is actually a rum. And it's done the old Cuban style of rum, where they actually age it in a barrel for eight years. And it actually takes on a lot of the notes of an old-fashioned whiskey. Um, so by creating this cocktail featuring rum with some whiskey notes in it, it's going to really mess with your brain a little bit and give you some flavors that you're used to, some that you're not, and it's all going to come together really nicely for you once you're finished. So now that we've prepped all of our ingredients here on the table, what we're going to do is transition over to the cooking area, and we're going to prepare what I call a homemade simple syrup. And what that basically does is allow us to mix all of our ingredients together, extract the flavors we want to extract for the fall, and compile it all together into a simple, or not so simple, syrup to feature in this cocktail. Once we're done making that syrup, we'll be ready to go start mixing. All right, bar experiencers, so now it's time to experience making a not so simple syrup. Some of the thought process behind this syrup was that we're gonna use colors that actually create reds and oranges and yellows mixed together to hopefully it'll finish up at a nice kind of fall orange color. So the base of this syrup is actually gonna be a red beet. Um, so the first step is to dice this into little cubes, and we're going to toss it on the pan, cooked at medium. All right, so now that we have our diced up uh, beet, we're going to put this right into the pan. Now, the thing with cooking is, whether you're doing a syrup or cooking for a nice fancy meal for dinner, you put in the ingredients that take the longest to cook first. It's kind of common sense, but not everyone realizes that. So you don't always want to just throw everything in a pot on medium and just let it go. So beets go in first, because most root vegetables take... A few minutes to soften up and extract their flavor. We do have it on medium. We're going to let that come to temperature for a while and then add the next ingredients. All right, so now that the beets have been on the medium setting on the stove for about, I don't know, four or five minutes, we start to smoke a little bit in the pan. We get a nice simmer going. We're going to add in the sugar and let it caramelize in with the sugars from the natural sugar from the beets. So we're going to take white sugar. You can use brown sugar, Indian demerara sugar, you can use raw cane sugar, whatever you fancy. We're saying white sugar today. Get about a full cup in there. We're going to sprinkle that over the beets. And what's going to happen is, actually going to melt the sugar and it'll start to extract a lot of the flavor from the beets into the sugar right into the pan. Let that stay covered for about a minute, then we'll add some more ingredients. All right, check out that bubbling, sugary beet madness. That's how you know the flavors and the colors and the pigmentation from the beets are all getting extracted. And you see that sugar melting and all bubbling together. It smells like jam. All right, and now that we have the water boiling with the sugar melted into the water and the beets still going, getting that flavor extracted into our syrup, we're gonna add some spices to really bring the syrup home. So for starters, we're going to use four sticks of Vietnamese cinnamon. Just drop it right into the liquid, let it boil, kind of like a tea. We're going to let it steep and let the flavors kind of unfurl as the cinnamon bark starts to um, you know, uncurl and those uh, different flavors and congeners really seep into the drink. Second one we're going to use is allspice. Allspice comes in little beads. We're going to use about a tablespoon. I'm going to eyeball it. It's okay. Um, 
People oftentimes believe that allspice is actually a combination of cinnamon and nutmeg and cloves. It's actually not true. Allspice is its own unique spice. It just has a lot of the similar flavor characteristics as in other spices. So they started calling it allspice because it takes on a lot of those spices from all the other spices. Add a tablespoon. Lastly, we're going to add about a tablespoon of fresh ginger. Best way to do ginger when you're in a hurry, just grab a grating tool and we're going to grate fresh ginger directly into our syrup. And it's okay if you get a little bit of pulp or a little bit of skin, whether it's the beet or the ginger, into the syrup. At the end of the day, we're going to take this tool called a chinua. It's a mesh, uh, a mesh colander in a conical shape. And it's going to sift out all those uh, impurities, all the skins, all the pulp. So don't even worry about it. Put it all in there, let the flavors marinate, and have a blast. All right, I wish you were here in this kitchen with me because the ginger, the cinnamons, and the flavors and smells that are coming out of this pan are incredible. Hot, so good. So what's happening now is the syrup is boiling. I, about four minutes ago, I put in the allspice and the cinnamon and the ginger. And the general rule is when you have a pot of boiling syrup or water, you wanna let the, the dried spices steep for about four minutes, four to five minutes, and then it's time to take it out. So come three or four minutes in now, I'm going to add in my pure pumpkin puree. No additives, no sugar, just the puree of pumpkin. I'm going to give it a few stirs. I'll be ready to strain out all the pulp and all the skins and all the, all the ingredients. So I have just the syrup remaining um, with my fancy chinois tool. So after I add this, we'll get the straining. All right, I want to give you a close-in shot of this pot. Now that I've added the pumpkin, I'm giving it a few stirs with my whisk, making sure it gets blended in. Now, pumpkin actually has sugar, just like most vegetables and most uh, fruits do. So when we add heat to that pumpkin puree, it's going to break down the sugars and starches that are naturally inside the pumpkin and mix in with our the sugar we added to add more flavor to our syrup. So to summarize, we have cinnamon, allspice, uh, we have pumpkin puree, we have beets, we have ginger, and all that together is going to boil. And actually what we're doing is creating a reduction right here, and it's going to reduce down in volume, it's gonna reduce the flavors down in concentration, and it's gonna make for a really great syrup. So the next step is gonna to be to sift out all of our ingredients, so we're left with just the pure syrup. All right, I know you're excited to see me use my chinois. Um, the best way to do this, take a whisk, put it inside the chinois, just like that, and rest it in our pot. Now, we're gonna take our wonderful reduction, and we're gonna dump it inside the chinois. What's going to happen is it's going to funnel down right into our pot, leaving behind all of the spices and cinnamon bark and skins and pulp, and it's going to let all the juices from the syrup filter through. As you can see, that wonderful color coming out, the red. What I love about Bar Experience's cocktails is they come with awesome colors, awesome flavors, but the thing is, we don't use artificial colors. All the reds and the purples and the blues and the greens that you see in our drinks come from natural ingredients. In this case, the red's mostly influenced by the red beets. So we're gonna keep moving this around until we extract out as much of the liquid as we can, and then we're gonna bottle it up. Get ready for the next shot where we actually make the cocktail, the jack-o'-lantern sour. All right, so I've reduced down the syrup into just the syrup element of the cocktail. No more cinnamon bark, no more allspice beads, it's just the syrup. If you want to get a little bit more granular, no pun intended, um, you can use a coffee filter, a mesh coffee filter, and a funnel, and just filter it one more time to get a little bit more of the uh, impurities out. And that's when it gets bottled up. All right, we're back at the bar. Our syrup's been made. All the little strained out impurities are left behind. This is great for pancakes or waffles later, so save that. Never waste a thing, as any good chef will tell you. Delicious. The rest goes to compost. All right. So now we're here at the bar. 
Everything's prepped and ready to go. We're going to make our jack-o'-lantern sour. Now let's start with what is a sour? A sour is a drink with a base spirit, typically two ounces of that base spirit. It could be anything from vodka to gin to rum to whiskey, even tequila. Tequila sour, more commonly known as a margarita. It's a popular cocktail. Uh, that kind of gives away the next ingredients. There's some element of sugar, which in this case will be our jack-o'-lantern uh, simple syrup, and obviously sour can be lemon or lime. Today we're using lemon. Um, I'll give you the ratios as I make it, but those are essentially the ingredients of a sour. Now a classic sour is always going to have an egg white. So we have our organic eggs. We're going to filter out the egg yolk and just use the white, and that'll create a thin meringue on top of the drink and give the whole drink a velvety texture as you're drinking it, and really changes the whole dynamic of the drink. So sit tight and let's get started on the Jack Lantern Sour. All right, so we're gonna grab our tin, AKA shaker, and we're gonna add our ingredients without ice to start. That's very important. So we're starting with our Bacardi 8, which is an eight year aged rum um, done Cuban style. People don't realize Bacardi was a Cuban company. Uh, when the socialist commies moved in, they escaped Puerto Rico to keep their business uh, free enterprise. So it's actually a Cuban style rum. But today, it is in Puerto Rico as the headquarters. We're going to do a full two ounce pour. This is called a Japanese jigger. This is a standard jigger right here. I prefer the Japanese jigger. After we get two ounces of this, we're going to dump it right into our tin. Next, we're going to do a full lemon. I don't like pulp, so I use a fine strainer on the drink. Normally a full lemon would be about an ounce and a half to two ounces of juice, a little much for a cocktail, but in a sour you can get away with using a lot more fresh citrus. So we squeeze that in. Number two, two halves equal a whole for all you math majors out there. That all will go to compost. And lastly, the best part, we're going to do one full ounce of the Jack Lantern Simple Syrup. Look at that color. Oh. The last and key ingredient for a sour is going to be the egg white. Now watch how I do this. Crack one side, got two halves. I keep dumping the yolk back and forth inside the eggshell until just the white drops down. Rest goes away. And this is called a reverse shake. We do the ice second. So the first shake has no ice and we just shake all the ingredients. What this does is it takes the acids from the lemon juice and it actually breaks down the proteins in the egg white before the ice touches it. So once the ice gets involved, water gets involved. And we don't want that just yet. We also don't want it to get cold yet. Another little technique. See where it's touching? See where it's open? Twist it halfway, and you bump it, and it pops up. You don't want to get stuck here trying to get it undone. Now it's time for the ice. All the ice goes in. What this second phase does is twofold. It cools down the drink because of the ice, but it also adds about um, an ounce and a half to two ounces of water to the drink. And water is actually a very essential ingredient in every cocktail. Because it's a sour and it has egg white, you want to shake it extra vigorously, extra long. So we're probably going to go a full 30 seconds on this. We're not shaking it like this, we're doing like a piston. Front to back, over your shoulder, behind your ear, full extension. Until you see a little bit of crystallized, little crystallized fog on your glass, it's time to pop it open. Fine strainer again. Called a Hawthorne strainer. It keeps the ice from
from dumping into your glass. Get the color on that. And as you'll notice, as the drink settles, you'll see the meringue appear on top and uh, the rest of the cocktail kind of settle at the bottom of the glass. All right, now that we've completed our cocktail, I took the liberty of adding a little mini pumpkin cap to it. You can carve out a little hole for a straw or just have it sit there to cover your drink when you go to the bathroom. Or even put your name on it. Might look pretty cool. I also drew a jack-o'-lantern face to show some of my creativity on the cocktail. I like to always give it a good garnish. So they sell black limes on Amazon. Just Google it. What they are are real limes. Um, they do this in Persia. They essentially dry it out over time, and when it dehydrates, it turns black. And you can now use it as a seasoning. So we'll use that to give it a little bit of a kind of copper on our drink, make it look mysterious and Halloween-y. Now it's time for the best part. Cheers. Phenomenal. See you next time, and I can't wait for you to follow us and learn more recipes for the fall, for the spring, for the winter, for the summer. If you have enjoyed this video by bar experience, I would encourage you to follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and that way you can stay up to date on all of our latest instructional videos, new recipes as they come in and out of each month and each season hereafter, and I look forward to making our next cocktail with you. See you later, bar experiencers.